Instead of decorating with somebody else, this time it was for me. It's all about creating an ambiance. Make life feel sexy, that's what I say. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC everyone. We've got a show filled with bespoke luxury, so it's fitting that I am bringing it all to you from this decked out duplex in the famed Hotel des Artistes on the Upper West Side. Despite its name, it's never actually been a hotel. It was originally built in 1918 as a co-op for artists. A man, if these walls could talk or dance or paint or sing or write. <laughs> From the foyer, you step into this 42 foot long great room with an easy flow between the living, dining, and den areas. Light streams through these two huge casement windows and 18 foot ceilings just add to the epic nature of this entertaining space. The Handsome Chef's Kitchen features custom walnut cabinetry and plenty of counter space and can even be closed off for all those catered soirees this place definitely demands. Upstairs is the refined primary suite, one of three bedrooms in this iconic New York home. Well, from one historical home to another, we are getting started at this huge Gilded Age townhouse in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Sited on a corner lot just steps from Prospect Park, this over 9,000 square foot home is filled with ornate detail and old world charm. But it was the job of designer and stager Jason Saft to make it feel like a home. See how. Hi, I'm Jason Saff, founder of Stage to Sell Home, and today I cannot wait to give you a tour of this Gilded Age Brooklyn mansion that is the epitome of opulence and grandeur. And it's located on a quarter lot directly across from Prospect Park. This house is going to blow you away. Just look at the details in the limestone facade. Check out the stately wrought iron gate, not to mention the bronze and glass Parisian style canopy. I knew right away this was gonna be a fun one and I cannot wait to show you what we did inside. Come on. Staging a home like this can be a challenge. The architectural details are so stunning and rare that you don't wanna clash with it. My approach was that the details became the inspiration for how we designed every room. For example, here in the front parlor, we wanted to play off the ornate details in the ceiling molding. So we brought in these boucle sofas with curves that mimic the pattern in the ceiling. Another thing we did was play with the fact that we're directly across from Prospect Park. So I took inspiration from those views and I brought in this verdant green rug that also plays off the onyx in the fireplace. The middle parlor is typically a pass-through area, but I wanted to make it a destination. I wanted to make this room the social heart of the home. I'm in love with the woodwork here from the wainscoting, the coffered ceiling, the balustrade to the carved lions. So I chose furniture with a sculpted quality that I felt matched the integrity of the woodwork. The focal point of this room though is the majestic staircase. Speaking of woodwork, there's a fantastic poem inscribed in the mantle of this fireplace by Thomas O'Brien. Sweet is the blink of thine eye, fireside. And it's all about that feeling of warmth in the home. For the dining room, I brought in this oversized traditional table. I really wanted to showcase the grand scale of this fabulous entertaining space. The chairs mimic the same curved style that we used in some of the other rooms. And the green area rug, again, is a nod to Prospect Park. And typically with staging, the idea is to remove older light fixtures to bring in something brighter. However, I could not bring myself to even think about taking out these stunning original fixtures that are works of art. My goal in designing the primary suite was to create a serene and calm environment. The bedroom has three zones, the sleeping area with a modern king-size bed, a sitting area starring this mid-century inspired sofa, and even 
this workstation with a pair of my favorites, these sculptural chairs by Sarah Sherman Samuel. How could you not love a dressing room that comes with original stained glass and these beautiful intricate closets? And speaking of stained glass, even the bathrooms have these beautiful windows. How's that for rare? We designed this library to be the kind of place where you could run your own empire. The light fixture with the stunning medallion is the focal point of the room. So we placed the desk directly under it as an anchor. And we surrounded it with pieces from different time periods. From the Giancarlo Valle chair to the Eames chaise, even the books and the artwork all represent different time periods. The reason we did that, again, because I was so conscious of the original woodwork. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this stunning Park Slope mansion that proves without a doubt beauty and luxury are timeless. I hope to see you on the next one. Stick around because coming up next, star interior designer Martin Lawrence Boulard shows us his take on modern Hollywood glamour. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we love to see how the pros design for themselves. So we were delighted when Martin Lawrence Boulard invited us over. He filled his Spanish style villa in West Hollywood with curated collections, lively pattern and bold color. And the result is completely original. See for yourself. Hi guys, I'm Martin Lawrence Boulard and welcome to my home. Come take a look. This is a 1920s villa built in the heart of the Hollywood Hills. And it kind of has this wonderful Mediterranean vibe that was so popular with the architecture of that period. All these amazing original details exist still in this house, like this wonderful stairwell. My living room is really my favorite spot. I actually designed this house 20 years ago for Craig Kilborn. And when I bought it, I decided to put my own spin on it. Instead of decorating with somebody else, this time it was for me. I put in metal frame windows, which is one of the things that I really love. Really cool light fixturing was very important to me. And that is made out of bronze and actually horsehair. So it's a really interesting moment. It took a guy three weeks on his back up there, painting out this very Moroccan flavor. The house again has got great original details like this wonderful fireplace, but I added Moroccan tile to it just again, to give it that little bit of an extra flavor. And one of my really favorite moments in this space has got to be my palm trees. These palm trees actually once belonged to the famous fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent. They're really special moments for me and I think add so much to the layering of this space. On this sofa, I cuddle up with my dog and I watch movies. The fun part of this room is that it kind of looks like a tent. And I was inspired by a trip to Istanbul where I saw this amazing tented room in this old palace and it inspired me to create a little version of it for myself. The other thing that really feels sort of very Turkish again and was inspired are all these amazing little tables. Often you see these groupings of these kind of cool tables. And for me, I love the idea of that. And well, hey, who doesn't live a little chocolate whilst they're watching a movie? So the bar has become kind of like everybody's hangout spot. But the thing that I love about this bar is that the doors open up and I have this amazing little fire pit area outside there, which becomes our real entertaining spot. The way I kind of made this a little jewel box, I think is with this wonderful emerald green color, which I incorporated in the ceiling in a high gloss lacquer, which kind of creates a very glamorous glow. I covered it in my wallpaper that I designed for Cole & Son which is a sort of like wild tropical jungle. And also I added antique mirror to the back of my paneling. So when the lights are dimmed and the candles are going, you get this sort of wonderful reflection even from this paneling. It's all about creating an ambiance. Make life feel sexy, that's what I say. People say the kitchen is the heart of the home, but I have to say for me, I'm not really much of a cook, but I do love a good kitchen. I designed these cabinets using something called mushrabier, which is a Middle Eastern screenwork that they used to use in mosques and temples. 
I added antiqued brass behind it and sort of wonderful little brass knobs and handles on everything. It has that real sparkle to it. And of course, the backsplash. This is a really fun little moment because this is all a Moroccan tile and it's called Zilij, very, very particular to Morocco and something that I love because again, it adds that flavor to this house that is just a little unexpected. Now, I always like to connect my rooms and I do it with color. So I took that wonderful green that's on my kitchen island and added it to my drapery. Connection in design is such an important thing. So you get rooms to flow. This little dining area originally was very sectioned off. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna blow it out and make it into much more of an open experience. And the wonderful thing is it brings all the light in from my garden and kind of makes this into a very, very magical space. Again, I added this very wonderful modernist experience with the chandelier that's sort of unexpected to the period of the house, but really gives a little bit of my flavor. And so the lighting always adds kind of a bit of star style. But speaking of star style, my new book just happens to be called Star Style. And it celebrates a lot of the amazing celebrities that I've gotten to work for, including Cher, who just happened to write the forward for me. And to show you a little bit more star style, come upstairs and see my bedroom. So my bedroom is really my sanctuary. It's the space where I really get to totally chill. I love a four post bed. I just love the way it makes you feel. It kind of adds a little grandiose moment to the bedroom. I like to mix all the textures up. And I always think the bedroom is a space to really luxuriate and spoil yourself. Amazing bed sheets, wonderful blankets. It kind of adds to that whole amazing moment. Again, I love green. So I have to have a little bit of green. So I decided to put this incredible wallpaper up that's sort of a scene of tropical trees. It almost feels like you're in Bali. And I think it adds to the whole ambiance of this space. Thank you so much for coming to see me. Next time, come and enjoy the pool with me. Coming up, designer Vanessa De Leon shows us around this Parisian-inspired apartment on Fifth Avenue. Welcome back, everyone. A friend of the show, Vanessa De Leon, is known to always bring a glamorous flair to her projects. And her newest one, right on Fifth Avenue, is no exception. Paris was the main inspiration here, amped up with color texture and dramatic pieces that give each space a certain je ne sais quoi. Take a look. Hi, I'm interior designer Vanessa De Leon and welcome to this Parisian inspired apartment on Fifth Avenue. This was any interior designer's dream, a complete gut renovation and I can't wait to show you around. This apartment was filled with walls creating tiny cramped spaces and I knew I had to open it up, which you can see as soon as you step in. This place is all about the graceful flow between the spaces. It's important to make a design statement right away, but the apartment didn't have a natural foyer, so I created one here. I added this beautiful textured wallpaper with gold leafing. Gold accents continue, not only here in the sconces and mirror, but throughout the entire apartment. Talk about setting a luxurious tone. The kitchen is one of the first things you see as soon as you walk in, so I knew it had to be a showstopper. We open up the walls and added this double-sided gold hood, which pairs well with this black and gold range. Like Coco Chanel said, the little black dress never goes out of style, and that's why we went with black for all the appliances and cabinets. We continue the gold in the countertops with a waterfall edge. And these fixtures are all reminiscent of a Parisian bistro. This dining room was formerly a small office. This structural column wasn't going anywhere, so we embraced it by adding molding. It also helped to delineate the area, and I boosted that delineation with the soffits throughout the perimeter. For the table, I went with glass and lucite so it didn't feel bulky. I didn't want the space to be defined by a table like most dining rooms are. I instead chose to extend this banquette, which increases the opportunity for entertaining. And the gold accents could be found in the chandelier and the chairs. This living room is the star of the show, don't you think? 
It absolutely bursts with texture, color, and design drama. We brought in this deep, tufted emerald sofa that is so comfortable and added these decorative pillows from my collection. For the rug, I wanted something muted but still had some movement to it. So we had this custom made with subtle streaks of ivories, golds, and grays. These lacquered rock-shaped tables bring a dash of the unexpected, as do the eclectic mix of seating I placed around here. I sourced these side tables. They're covered in faux hide and they're so good to the touch. We dropped the ceiling so we could add the chandelier, but made it feel like it was always part of the architecture by adding the medallion and decorative molding. This living room exudes joie de vivre, no? On the way to the bedrooms, I wanted to create a splash in this hallway, pun intended. Check out this linen wallpaper. Accent it with a Sputnik light fixture. Isn't this guest bedroom cute? Here, it was all about making it bright and airy, but it also had to be flexible. That's why I went with the daybed. I saved the drama for the ceiling. Look at this wallpaper that swirls in rose and gold. And because guest bedrooms should always be a little playful, I added butterflies in the light fixture and the wall art. The primary bedroom, by contrast, is more elegant but also eclectic, filled with contrast and surprise. Like this dramatic blue accent wall behind the tufted headboard, a crystal chandelier hangs overhead, and the fuchsia shades lounge in the corner provides a pop of color. I also designed the champagne Roman shade with crystal tassels. I wanted this bedroom to feel curated and romantic, and I think we succeeded. I really hope you enjoyed my latest project for Paris meets Fifth Avenue. Au revoir. Coming up, we head back to the West Coast for a look at this pattern-rich and oh-so-relaxing home. Welcome back, everyone. And now we join interior designer Allison Pilevsky at her client's home in the Pacific Palisades. She brought drama and visual interest to the open floor plan, and the result is a pattern-rich, vibrant home that's a showcase of both style and function. Take a look. Hello, I am Allison Tulevsky. I have an interior design firm in Santa Monica, California, and we're here today in Pacific Palisades, and I'm gonna show you a house that we did from the ground up. I'm so excited to take a tour with you, so let's go on in. This is one of the first spaces that you walk into, so the lighting was a very important part of it. They're made of black and steel material, which you'll see repeated throughout the house in the fireplace and some other areas, and they add a sculptural element. So the foyer leads us to the living room and the main entertaining space, and this piece here, we designed specifically to act as a room divider. And one of the great things about this piece is that it's almost two consoles together as one, and each one has a little ottoman underneath it, and they're just great little additions to have around. One of the challenges to designing a contemporary or modern space is that they often feel like they're big white boxes. Ways that we got around that in this space was to use the black windows and doors. We also built this beautiful cabinet by creating this movable panel. And the coffee table is a scored oak, which has a gold paint patina set into the engraved scored lines, which I love. It's kind of a throwback to an old Hollywood look. And here again in this space, you'll see the same materials that we used in the bookshelf. The black and steel, the walnut in the mantelpiece, all feels like it was designed with the same thought process and goals. This moment that I'm in right now is cozy and intimate and just makes you feel really good while you're sitting in the space. This kitchen is all about the stonework, and I absolutely love the way that it's book matched to create this V on the face of the hood. It's the best moment in the house. 
The light quartzite in this space serves as a really nice contrast against the darker tone cabinetry that you see here. And that was something that we deliberately chose to tie back the materials from some of the other rooms since we are working with a open floor plan. It's important to create continuity and flow. This outdoor living space reminds me a lot of what it feels like when you're on vacation and you open your hotel room door to a fantastic balcony or outdoor space. And if you really want to get away, you can retreat upstairs and find your sanctuary in the primary bedroom. This bedroom is a bit more minimalistic. Their concept behind it was that they wanted to relax and really be able to focus and gather their thoughts in this space. So we kept it very calming. The bed that we selected is made of both wood and fabric and give it a little bit of character. And then the fabrics on the blankets and the pillows make the space feel inviting and warm and like you just want to jump into the bed. And of course, no resort would be complete without a grand balcony to take advantage of spectacular views from all angles. Well, that's it for our tour today. I hope to see you again soon at another project. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>